Never let yourself be beaten down by difficulties. St. Eugene de Mazinod, founder of the Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate, made a difference in countless lives of the poor. This legacy continues through the Missionary Oblates and those who work and are associated with them. When the Oblate Rule of Life was presented to the Vatican, the Founder's words, we must spare no effort, were translated into the Latin phrase, to leave nothing undared. In any language, it is the challenge to go beyond the ordinary. For me, it's particularly the fact that Bishop de Mazenot was very human. That he kept his character, a very hot character, a character from the South. But he used this character not to destroy, but he used it to build, to push others on. He was a fiery preacher, but he was also a good organizer. He had no time for wishy-washy things or for wishy-washy people. He pushed them, he pushed them to the limit precisely because, because he had this character. But it wouldn't have been enough to have this character if he hadn't put it at the service of a mission inspired to him by the Holy Spirit. God is present in the world through charisms. A charism is a special gift given to an individual by God's Spirit for the good of the larger community. Charisms are as diverse as the needs they serve, but always rooted in charity and collaboration. Just as God worked through St. Eugene, each of us is called to better the world through the unique circumstances of our lives. A man who we, see, who we can see in his life has come from a dysfunctional family and dysfunctional times. As a bishop, he's had tough times, even with the Vatican who abandoned him for a while. And yet, along comes this man today. And he says to us, yes, life is difficult. Yes, life can deal you a dirty hand. But if we realize that we are chosen and we are blessed, not chosen over others, but chosen to be able to see the chosenness of others. Eugene's parents had an arranged marriage that combined his mother's wealth and father's nobility. This compassionate child gave the clothes off his back to a child in need. As a haughty, self-centered adolescent, he believed he knew everything. When he considered marriage, it was only as a business transaction. Despite the violence and devastation of the French Revolution and years exiled to another country, he developed relationships that inspired and provided his life with a stability that his divorced family did not. I was only 12 years old when God planted in my heart the first real desires to devote my life to the missions. This desire came from listening to Father Zanelli read letters from missionaries in foreign lands. The church in France was not meeting the needs of the poor. As a priest, Father de Mazenod responded to their needs with dignity, compassion, and a Christ-like love, reshaping the spiritually damaged society. If you look at him, you can forgive a lot of the things that de Mazenod did. I mean, sometimes he was over-enthusiastic, but the man had fire. He faithfully followed the Spirit. And he could still explode, but the man was constantly working at right relationships. He had to apologize very many times. Hey, I can, I can identify with that. To admit he had erred or overstepped himself was extremely difficult. Just after ordination, I resolved to pronounce those words that are so difficult for me to say. I'm wrong. I made a mistake. St. Eugene struggled to come to terms with his emotions, whether it was anger or affection. Such was the case with Father Marius Suzanne, a promising young oblate who attracted many through his preaching, enthusiasm, and wisdom. Without any warning, the founder publicly berated and deposed him as superior. 
This unexpected and ruthless condemnation deeply hurt Father Suzanne, who returned to mission preaching and literally worked himself to death. After a painful illness, he died at age 29. Believing himself responsible, Father de Mazenod was devastated. Since Eugene's Good Friday conversion during his 20s, the crucified Christ symbolized an oblation, a total self-giving. Therefore, he insisted that oblates always wear the cross. He centered his life on the Paschal Mystery, the journey through suffering and death that culminates in the transforming resurrection. Charity is essential to the oblate spirit. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Rejoice over the virtues and talents that others possess as if we had them, and bear with mildness the minor faults yet to be overcome. He cautioned his men, Worry instead about virtue, regularity, good discipline, and edification. On Christmas Eve, 1837, he was named Bishop of Marseille. Contemplating this work, he prayed, For them I must be prepared to sacrifice comfort, inclinations, rest, even life itself. Lord, help me. I want to be a good bishop. His residence was open daily from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Whether wealthy or poor, all were treated with the same dignity and affection. An occasional con artist, out for some easy money, rarely deceived the bishop. His own life of strict poverty made him compassionate and sensitive. One day, Bishop de Mazenod, dressed as a simple priest, removed his shoes in the very middle of the street in the dead of winter. After making a poor man put them on, he went in his stocking feet to buy another pair. He encouraged people to know their dignity. Each morning at the docks, the wives of the fishermen would sell the night's catch. Babo, considered queen of the fishwives because of her imposing personality, had been converted by a sermon on the prodigal son. She then converted and married her common-law husband, Joseph, the coachman. In 1845, Bishop de Mazenod encouraged Babot to form the Sodality of St. Anne among the fishwives to continue their religious instruction. They also took the bishop to visit the poor who were sick or dying. When France sought to expel the Jesuit fathers, no one dared to carry out the order when the bishop had Babot and the fishwives stand guard around the Jesuits' residence. With the bishop's blessing, Babot convinced her husband to form a religious association of working men. Each Sunday, the men gathered to pray and listen to religious instructions. After just one year, this conference of St. Joseph had a thousand members. For those from the upper class, like Bishop de Mazenod, giving money to charity was a traditional obligation. But he knew that wasn't enough. He worked to correct injustice by promoting social services whereby the poor could attain a more decent life. Others followed his example. During the 1835 cholera epidemic in X, Oblate Father Daniel André coordinated the city's aid to victims using a local cafe as his center. Bishop de Mazenod, hearing of Ireland's famine and plague in the late 1840s, asked the people of his diocese to help. Let it not be said that they belong to one empire and we to another. As long as men and women dwell on this earth, we are all children of our Father in heaven and neighbors to each other. And it was very bad. All the immigrants from the famine was there. And he said, something's got to be done for these people. Because Eugene de Mazenod, whatever the poor was, he was there. St. Eugene insisted the missionaries be ministers of mercy to the abandoned rather than seek flattery from the wealthy for eloquent lectures. They spent their mornings in church, available to anyone who wanted to discuss problems or spiritual needs. Brothers, through their technical, professional, or pastoral service, exercised a fruitful ministry in situations not always open to the priest. After an exhausting day, the missionaries would sit down to a late, simple meal. After a few hours of sleep, they would rise at 3.30 a.m. for prayer and the mission duties of the day. The founder prayed daily before the Blessed Sacrament. There he symbolically encountered his brother oblates throughout the world 
and placed before God the joys and frustrations of the day. Prayer renewed his energy and focused his mission. Bishop de Mazinod believed in people and challenged them to go beyond just keeping the commandments. A good Christian must also help free the poor from their misery by working for justice. When the right to vote was finally given to the ordinary classes, it meant that the majority of people had to walk a far distance to the county seat to vote. Bishop de Mazinod allowed parish priests to dispense from the obligation of Sunday Mass all persons for whom this would cause a hardship. A daring decision since the French general elections of 1848 occurred on Easter Sunday. Charity embraces everything, and whenever necessary for all new needs, it invents new means, whether they be spiritual aids or temporal helps. They are all given generously in the name of Jesus Christ. With only 25 members, Bishop de Mazinod was convinced that Oblates were destined to go overseas. But where? The answer came in 1841, when Bishop Bourget visited Marseille to beg for Oblate missionaries for Canada. These Oblates had to be capable of facing challenges and dangers with determination and charity. Bishop de Mazinod knew that leaving home never to return was difficult he would stay up late to visit with the departing missionaries. He seems to be so interested in his missionaries. Whenever they uh, write to him from Montreal, from Oregon, from Western Canada, from Texas, he is so interested in having the precise news of what's happening with so and so, and uh, he would like to be there. While Father Vital Grandin was in Marseille, the founder wanted to favor this quiet and unassuming oblate who had suffered such great hardships in Canada. He had a magnificent pike stuffed and prepared for dinner. During the meal, Bishop de Mazinod commented, I am sure that you never ate such a fish in your poor mission in the north. Father Grandin hesitantly but humbly replied that when they fished for winter provisions, they saved the trout and char for themselves. The pike was frozen and stored to feed the sled dogs. In life's difficulties, the Oblates always looked to Mary for help. The founder's strong devotion to Mary was passed on to him from his mother's deep faith. When a ship left the bay and reached the open sea, the outgoing missionaries went up on deck, looked back toward the Virgin, and sang the Salve Regina, a Latin hymn asking for her protection. Bishop de Mazinot died on May 21st, 1861, hearing his oblate sons prayerfully gathered around his bed chanting this hymn. On December 3rd, 1995, the Catholic Church officially declared him Saint Eugene de Mazinot. The celebration in Rome was attended by Jesus Hernandez Serrano, who in 1987 was cured of an aggressive form of liver cancer through Saint Eugene's intercession. The celebration surrounding the canonization brought today's oblates even closer to the spirit of the founder. These three days, it's a moment of celebration of the reality that we have been living. But today, I see it as a moment really that we become one with the spirit of the founder. You know, as a man who had a, a vision and who has been understood in many different countries. And today it becomes one spirit of the founder. And we give this spirit to the church. Our challenge today is not to do things exactly as St. Eugene de Mazinot did. The charism challenges us to see the world as he saw it, through the eyes of Christ, seeking out today's most abandoned, wherever they may be. He preached to the, to the um the servants, those who nobody else would bother about, and in their own language, he had the common touch. Um, and he drew them with this, I guess, this warmth and this friendliness that must have been so much part of him. His love for the poor, I think, always did attract me. And I think that's been our, our strength as oblates. We try to be close to the poor, to those who, who don't have the possibility to defend themselves and have themselves heard. We try to help those, and I think this 
particular trait of the of the mission uh, with the Oblates is, is still very living everywhere. They've discovered that that charism is not just for religious or for priests or for missionaries going to all kinds of countries. It's for everybody. That what Bishop de Masnot has been saying, what Father de Masnot has been saying, and what Saint Eugene has been saying, is the basic message of the gospel. Love God, love your neighbor, because everything is contained in that. The founder of the Missionary Oblates prayed, What I ask of God is that he choose for us and send us the people we need to do this work. Even today, nearly a century and a half after his passing, his legacy of daring calls us to hear the good news as we share it with the abandoned. And together we'll reach the other side of struggle.